everybody. Ty Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Business is about to pick up on the channel. I don't know if you saw the post earlier today, but I have a tropical disturbance to discuss. We're actually going to hold off on that video till the morning because we do have severe weather that's been in the forecast for a few days. I've talked about it a little bit, but we're within the 48 hour window now, really within 36 now. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that because it could be a substantial wind and tornado threat along with the hail threat to go along with this. Also a chance of this being upgraded to an enhanced risk. I do think the enhanced risk is mainly going to be a hail driven risk right now. We're currently sitting at a 15 hatched with that. We even have the Twin Cities involved in there. We also have a good chunk of Iowa, parts of eastern South Dakota. We have southwestern North Dakota in the mix and even have a small portion of northeastern Nebraska to go along with it. The wind threat is currently not a hatch risk. I do think that there is a chance that that could get upgraded to a hatch risk. I don't know if it'll go to enhanced risk levels or not, but we'll have to see how things develop throughout the day. And then there's also a 5% tornado threat area, which of course, like I said before, includes the Twin Cities area. Some other cities are down here in the bottom that are within that 5% region, St. Paul. Sioux Falls is in there as well. Rochester's in there as well as Bloomington. So pretty busy day ahead. Odds are we will be streaming. The complicated part about tomorrow's threat is there actually is expected to be two sectors that we'll be looking at and two portions of the event. We'll probably end up missing the first one due to the fact that I'll be at work. The second one, however, is probably going to be the one that I will end up being able to cover. We'll see how things kind of pan out from that point. But that being said, we do have a risk that follows that on the following day. And this is where we see a continuation of those storms or redevelopment of these storms over here towards Kansas City, Topeka, also Peoria involved, as well as Springfield, Illinois. Then we also have Hannibal, Missouri as well. Main threat with this is most likely going to be, again, damaging winds. This is probably going to be in an environment very similar to what tomorrow's environment will be. I think this is mainly going to have damaging winds and hail. Tornado threat might still be there, but I think it's going to be a little bit more on the marginal side in comparison to tomorrow's outlook. But we'll see how things pan out from there, and we'll go ahead and take a look at the models in the meantime. Kind of changing things up here. We're using the NAM 3 kilometer instead of the HRRR. Just want to be able to see a little bit further out. We're covering both days here in this instance. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then, of course, also, like I said, tropics are going to be another story to talk about as we go through the next couple of days here. So any of my Floridians that are watching this now, I've not forgotten about you. I just want to make it clear. But in any case, though, here is the catalyst behind our upcoming storm. It's really going to be a trough that's associated more with activity that's going to be more so north of the border. But this flow is going to be almost perfect for these storms to develop over here, right around the Minneapolis area here. I do think that this occurs right around lunchtime, and this is going to be that first round that we talked about. And I think it really kind of helps ramp things up for the areas around western Wisconsin. Then we get a secondary round that fires off just before sunset here. And this will be the round that we'll end up covering here as far as live coverage is concerned if needed. So there will be some questions that I do have with this. And the reason that I can tell that this will be another round of storms is because of the diffluence that we're seeing here, where you're seeing that air spreading apart here. Whenever you see a jet stream like this and you see an area spreading apart like this, it's usually a good sign of thunderstorm activity. But that being said, though, we end up seeing this round pop up right around sunset. And I think this is going to really be made or broken in regards to intensity due to the outflow boundary that will be associated with that first system here. So it'll be interesting to see how things pan out. When we get to the reflectivity maps a little bit later, I'm going to go over it again. But in any case, though, this definitely has the look of a linear component, maybe some embedded supercells in there possibly as well to go along with that so like i said i do think all hazards are possible but i'm leaning for the most part into that wind threat we'll have to see if any of these storms end up being surface based if they end up being surface based then the tornado threat kind of ramps up a bit as we go forward here so not going to say that i would rule out an upgraded tornado threat but i think it's going to be pretty minimal a few tornadoes can't be ruled out though for sure and then as we get into the following day here we see remnants of that uh, mesoscale convective system or MCS 
as we go into the early morning hours around Missouri. And then, of course, like I mentioned before, we get a little bit of redevelopment to emerge here as we get later into the evening. Storms maintain themselves marginally well. But of course, as we get later into the evening, we lose that instability, that daytime heating that will help fuel these storms as they go forward. So not expecting as much of a long duration event or really powerful event from this, but still could get some pretty nasty storms over here towards central Missouri and even over towards Kansas as we go forward here. Oops, and I clicked the wrong map. I wanted to go to 700 millibars here. And what we're going to be looking for is, of course, a short wave. I mean, you can kind of see it at that last map. We were looking a little bit higher up in the atmosphere. This is exactly where you would want to be looking, though. As you can see, here's our first short wave here. The more prominent short wave, of course, occurs more so towards the evening here, especially towards south central Minnesota. And then, of course, as we continue to go forward, that persists into parts of Iowa and even Illinois as we get into the early morning hours. Still could see some severe storms right before we get into our work day. As we go forward beyond that point, we wait till later into the evening for this short wave to kind of reveal itself. And thus the storm activity kind of picks up from that point. I do think parameters are going to be a lot more limited on uh, the Thursday setup though. So while there is a slight risk for it, I do think that might be somewhat conditional. We'll have to see how things pan out with other ingredients, so to speak. Also, since we have that 5% tornado threat, and I'm going to hone in more so on tomorrow than I would on uh, Thursday in regards to the, the low level jet here, considering the level of threat that we have currently. But main thing I'm kind of looking for is any area where we're at about maybe 20 to 30 knots here, so to speak. If you can get a decent bit of low level jet available, that tornado threat does tend to go up a little bit higher. And there is a small pocket over here over towards southern minnesota i really think that's going to be the area of greatest concern in regards to that threat a little further to the south i think we're going to be a little bit more limited if we look at the hodiograph we can kind of see just based off of our storm relative felicities here we have some decent wind shear also looking at these wind barbs here on this skew t chart you can see a little bit of turning of the winds with height to go along with it well i said well like i said it's not the most robust tornado setup it's still one that could definitely warrant the chance for a few tornadoes to develop. And we'll continue to see that threat as we get later into the evening. But I do think these storms will lose intensity as we get later into the evening, because just like with the following day, tomorrow's setup is going to be heavily induced by instability as well. And the thing with instability is once you get later into the evening, more often than not, you start to lose that instability that thunderstorm fuel that cape so to speak which we'll talk about a little bit later but that thunderstorm fuel is going to start to diminish while that low level jet kicks in not saying that we can't get a few tornadoes later into the evening but the threat is going to diminish notably probably once we get towards about 9 10 o'clock central time then just for curiosity we'll still look at tomorrow's threat or the following day's threat for severe but <clears throat> As I expected, low level jet isn't really prominent over towards these regions. Maybe a little further out to the west, if a storm can develop, maybe we can get something going, but I just don't think the forcing is going to be quite as good over towards this region. Can't rule it, like I said, can't rule it out, but if I were to look over towards this area, look at that. There you go. That <laughs> pretty much answers that question. But in any case here, I do have my I do have a couple areas of interest over here, maybe towards the Kansas, Missouri line, if anything could get going earlier in the day. But it just seems like things don't quite go as well together for the upcoming setup on Thursday here. So another key component for severe weather while we're at it, we'll go ahead and take a look at the moisture return for the day tomorrow. And it looks like we actually get a really solid return here. Like, like I said, and during this time of year, you can actually get some interesting uh, features here from the crops. Uh, it's called transpiration, or if you live out in the area, it's called corn sweat. Sometimes can uh, increase the amount of moisture content toward the surface here. We have those dew points in the 70s, I think, in large part due to some of those crops. And even though sometimes soybean crops can induce corn sweat. Anyway, we have a whole video on that. so. Feel free to check that in the top right corner. 
But in any case here, we actually have a very considerable moisture return as we get later into the evening here. And like I said, it's going to help keep these storms going for just a little bit longer, but it's not going to keep them going forever. Eventually, as we get later into the evening, we start to lose some of that moisture. Main thing that we're going to be kind of lacking for these areas to keep these storms going into the long term is really going to be a instability and more so a lifting mechanism. And then the next day, very considerable pull from the Gulf of Mexico moisture here over towards these regions. And that's going to help a lot for storms that develop. But I, like I said, I really think the forcing mechanism, again, is going to kind of keep things a little bit more so on the down low. Of course, we know that this kind of stuff changes throughout the course of a day. So keep keep yourself updated as time goes on here because things can easily change with this setup. But in any case here, looking at our moisture return, pretty sufficient really for both days. I'm trying to get a look at the surface temperatures here while I'm at it. And for the most part, we're gonna see a lot of 80s and 90s, but considering that we're getting those 70 degree dew points, I do think that like I said, there is a chance that some of these storms could end up becoming surface based. And if they're more surface based, tornado threat does increase. I really think it'll be more so over towards the southwest part portion of uh, Minnesota where we could have that threat increase a bit more. Like I said, the overall tornado threat isn't going to be incredibly high, but like I said, there are some areas that kind of interest me where I think things could come together a little bit more favorably, so to speak. But like I said, it's, I do think that this is partially going to be conditional due to what that first round of storms that heads off towards the eastern half of the state of Minnesota and Wisconsin will do. Those storms can latch onto that outflow boundary. We could have a few more tornadoes, maybe even a significant one. But really thinking damaging winds hail will be the main threat here so to speak as far as the following day going into thursday i think the temperature to moisture spread is going to be a little bit too much it's going to be harder for these storms to become more surface based even though we end up getting probable hazard type as marginal tornado threat the shear looks like it's a little bit lower directional shear isn't all that impressive so that's going to help limit things just slightly of course, like I said before, plenty of instability looks like it's available here. Speaking of said instability, let's go ahead and take a look at that, looking at our mixed layer cape here. So here is what our instability is looking like for tomorrow. Once you start to get into the red, you're at about 3,000 plus joules per kilogram. And you can see pretty rampant amounts over here, again, towards the western half of that, where the slight risk area is currently. Towards this region, we can see areas even trying to sneak into the 4,000s here. So I have my concerns for these areas, but again, I think the main threat is going to be damaging winds and hail. Convective mode is going to matter heavily with this, which I think we're going to mainly see mostly a linear event. But like I said, we get any storms to form on that outflow boundary, they could become more discreet for at least a brief period of time. And that's when conditions would probably be a bit more favorable for tornadoes. But again, very much a now cast situation where conditions are variable leading up all the way into the event itself. As far as the following day is concerned, ample instability once again towards this region, towards the central plains and the central high plains. Look at that. In fact, we're getting into the 5000s here. So a lot of energy available. It's just the other mechanisms just aren't quite there that you would need in regards to severe weather the shear isn't all that great in the uh, lift is okay you have plenty of moisture but if you but if you don't have good shear you don't have good lift it does help limit a severe weather event, event more notably so to speak and that's pretty much what we're seeing in the case with this setup here as far as thursday is concerned like i said things can change this is only one model that I'm looking at, truthfully. Other models are in pretty good continuity with this one. But, of course, like I said before, things can change pretty quickly. I wouldn't be surprised if things go the other way with the way the year's gone, by the way. So keep your eyes open if you're over here towards Minnesota. Just putting that out there more so than anything else. 
right now it looks like you're okay but again we've seen how the year has been if you've been following along with the channel over the last couple of years or over the last few months it's been pretty great it's been pretty hectic it's been pretty busy so of course keep your eyes open looking at our storm initiation for tomorrow by the way here's that first line of storms right here another thing that this could do right here this first round could also take up some of that instability that's over here towards uh central and southern parts of minnesota here i keep on wanting to call it minneapolis that's why i keep pausing but if these storms take up enough energy that could limit the second round that's expected to develop here it's very interesting to see the activity that initiates over here towards the northern part of the state as well because those actually look very discreet and there is a ample amount of low level jet around this area too so we'll have to keep an eye on that i am am also interested in that southern mode that develops over towards south dakota and parts again of minnesota but eventually just like we talked about before convective mode kind of leans into a linear event you can see this little backward c shape that would be a potential bow echo that ends up forming which really leans into that damaging wind threat that i've been talking about here and as we go forward that congeals further into a line as we get later into the evening but look at how these storms eventually start to weaken right right around that time frame after 03 z which would be about again 10 o'clock central and then after that point we see a line of storms but just doesn't have the same kind of intensity we aren't seeing those updraft helicity streaks here which would show a um, very powerful updraft 75 meters squared per second squared and then of course we go into the following day we see that mesoscale convective system fall apart or mcs falls apart new initiation begins to develop late in the evening we see a couple of different rounds try to get going and then as of course as we get later into the evening with the amount of instability here i do think these could last a little bit longer than what that instability or that cape was showing but overall i do think the threat will still start to diminish also an interesting thing to make note of here is look at the direction of these storms actually pushing a little bit off to the southwest not something you typically will see but pretty interesting look right there to say the least for the most part, by the time we get towards this time frame, I wouldn't expect these storms to be all that intense. But, of course, we'll keep an eye out for it. Don't know if I'll be able to stream all the way up towards that time. But, again, just more so trying to keep you guys on game here. But in any case, though, I think I've rambled enough here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and you found it useful. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure you get that notification bell on to be notified of every video and also hit that share button as well. We are currently 98 subs away from 1,000. Would love to get there really soon, especially before the end of the year. That being said, though, appreciate you guys being here. You guys stay safe. There will be a lot more content coming our way, especially what we have going on with this and the tropics. But until then, it's the entire Metalhead Weatherman. Take care and have an awesome rest of your day, evening, whatever time you're watching this.